All right, so now that we've been introduced to the four transformations of the triads that we're going to be looking at here, let's get a little bit more in-depth and figure out what's going on with them. And particularly, come on, what's up with that slide? What's up with that slide progression? You know that's the one that seems the most sort of fascinating. So let's see what's going on here. So uh, as we know, first one was P, our P transformation. And we remember that the P transformation, it stands for parallel. And so when we talk about uh, this parallel transformation, what we're going to find, very, very simply for this one, that a major and a minor triad are going to share the same root, right? And we remember that all of these transformations involve going from a major triad to a minor or a minor to a major. They do not go major to major, do not go minor to minor for now. So as we're talking about this, very simply, a major triad and a minor triad are going to share the same root, right? So that's very straightforward. So you can see here, especially for the first two uh, options there, very simply, we've got a C major triad, which the third just moves from major to minor, and that's our P transformation, right? So you can see here, it's the same whether it goes from major to minor, whether it's going from minor to major, right? They work both directions. So F minor going to F major. That's a P transformation. And then the last one is really important to point out here that in this style, since we're not basing anything around what key we're in, right? We know there's no key that has both F minor and F major in it. So we're already sort of out of the key. So it follows then that A flat major and G sharp minor are also a P transformation because the third, it's a major third, the root is the same. A flat and G sharp are the same. It just transforms to go into sort of a more convenient spelling. So we can easily imagine that sort of going from A flat major going to G sharp minor will allow us, as we see with some of these other transformations, I could go somewhere like that, which is E major. Now, E major isn't a type of chord that we would think we could get to very easily from A flat major. But through this P transformation and reimagining that as G sharp minor, we're going to find that we can access all of these sounds. So the P transformation, very straightforward, parallel major to minor. Um, and like we, we've seen, it goes works both directions. The beauty of it, again, we're really focused on that parsimonious voice leading, is that one voice moves by one semitone. And in all of these, it's the third of the chord. So in F minor, the third moves up a half step, moves up a semitone from A flat to A natural. And we end up with, in all of these, two common tones. And that's, again, I really want to point that out about the A flat major to G sharp minor. That's two common tones. Even though it looks like it's a completely different sound, the, the only difference there is that one semitone, that one half step that moves in the third of the chord. So that's the P transformation. That's a nice sort of straightforward way to start. But I hope you can see that this is based on taking familiar ideas, parallel major to minor, and applying them to how we could access seemingly unrelated triads that way. Now here, of course, it's not hard to see the relationship between C and C minor, but the thing that we want to get to then is where, where could we go from C minor? that from C major would seem sort of very strange. These transformations allow us to slowly, like in all minimalist stuff, get, get ourselves to a more distant place that if we were keeping our tonality centered around the key, we wouldn't necessarily get to. Or like think back to theory two, the difficulties that we had to do to, to change keys, learning about altered chord modulations, learning about pivot chords, these are breaking down those key relationships. So that's the P transformation. Let's go next to the 
L transformation, which I hope we remember. L stands for leading tone. So this is the leading tone transformation. Just like parallel, I think we can imagine that there's a relationship here to something that we are familiar with, right? We've talked a lot about leading tones. And what we're going to see here is that we're just using the leading tone in a different way. So we're going to see that a major triad and a minor triad are going to exchange the root of the major for its leading tone. Now, that's a little confusing when you hear it right there or when you read it, but I think the musical examples will help to clarify that. So if we start, our first one here is on C major, and we're going to see that the L transformation would take C major, and we're going to exchange the root of C major, C, for its leading tone which gets us to E minor, right? So the leading tone of C is B, and that's what note we see there on the bottom of that E minor triad. So we're exchanging the root of C for its leading tone, right? And this C to E minor, this is sort of, for me, parallel obviously, you know, is interesting. But the L transformation is the one that's captivated so many composers because we can be so stable, right? We're moving, but we're also not moving all at once. It's that, that juxtaposition of stasis and motion that minimalism finds really interesting. And the, the leading tone transformation, the L progression, is really, really good for that. So when we go from major to minor, it seems like we're, ex we're trading, we're exchanging the root of the major chord for its leading tone. Let's look at going from minor to major here. So G minor, right? the leading tone or the L transformation from G minor is with E flat major. And here we can see, look at the fifth, look at the fifth of G minor, root third fifth, it's D. D is the leading tone of E flat, right? So when we go this direction, when we go from minor to major, again, all of these are L transformations. When we go from minor to major, we're gonna see that the fifth of minor is the leading tone of the major, right? So that's sort of, this one I know it can be a little hard to see. It's easier maybe to go from major to minor because you can already imagine what the leading tone of C is. You can imagine what the leading tone of E flat is. But we, we can see that if we think about what the fifth of the minor chord is, goes up to become the root of the major, right? And that, that L relationship, right? That's been, that's so captivating, right? And we can also see, I wanted to put on the right here, what it would look like if we just did them in root position, right? So F major, let's look at how F and A minor are related by the L transformation. So F major, the root of F, the root of the major chord, we trade it for its leading tone. What's the leading tone of F? It's E. And so we get this A minor, right? F major, A minor. Right, that's an L relationship. So whether it's uh, in the sort of really tight voice leading formats of the first two, or in root position, like in the last one, that's still an L relationship. And if the leading tone thing is hard to find, the, the one, one way to always think about these things is through the voice leading. So we're gonna find that in the L transformation, again, only one voice, moves by one semitone. So we've still got two common tones. If we look at C to E minor, the common tones are E and G, right? Those stay, they stay put, right? Right, that L transformation, right? Two voices stay common while one moves. Let's go from minor to major and we can see again that we've got these two common tones, G and B flat and the fifth of the minor chord just moves up by, 
by a half step. All right, that's the L transformation. Two common tones, right? G and B flat, and then uh, A and C are common tones in F major and A minor. So that's the L transformation. Again, I think this one by description is a little hard to see, um, but if you think from minor, just raise the fifth up by a half step from major. We're just trading the root for its leading tone, and there you go. That's the L transformation. Let's go to another one that has a very familiar name, R transformation, which has the relative at its core. This one, again, I think we're very familiar with what relative things are in music, and this follows those same ideas. So we're going to see the relative major and minor triads are going to trade for one another. They're going to transform into each other. So if we look again, always starting with C major here. C major, what's the relative minor of C major? It's A minor, right? So going from C major to A minor is our R transformation. If we started on minor, we could see, for instance, we've got F sharp minor. What's the relative major of F sharp minor? It's A major, right? These are all R transformations. So F minor, for instance, is related to A flat, A flat major. So that's our R transformation. This one, I, like I said, I think is a little bit more straightforward. But again, even though we've been going from C major to A minor since the beginning, if we start to think, okay, what if then I took some of these other ideas that we've been looking at and we did the R transformation from C to A minor, and then on A minor, I did the P transformation. Then we, we just went from C major to A major which are chords that we would not have thought were too closely related uh, before, but these transformations allow us to access those different points, right? So if we look really uh, deeply at the voice leading here, again, we're going to see that these are really close together. However, instead of one voice moving by one semitone, the R breaks, the, breaks down a little bit, and we've got one voice moving by two semitones. Right, so if we look at F sharp minor going to A major, right, F sharp moves down to E by a whole step, right? But again, there's two common tones. So all of these progressions so far have had two common tones. Right? Very, 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 very sneakily close together chords, right? And then I could do an, a P here, right? And now look, now I could just do a leading tone, and I just went F sharp minor, A major, A minor, to F major. In just a handful of chords, I really smoothly went from F sharp minor to F major, which uh, it would be very difficult to write a a smooth progression using functional harmony that would get that smoothly from F sharp minor to F major. All right, let's look at the last one, the S transformation. Full disclosure, you almost never see this called the S transformation because everybody loves just calling it the slide. And it's also always in all caps, which I don't know, I like it. So let's look at the slide transformation here. In this one, this is unique, the major and the minor triads are going to share the same third. So let's look at the example here. C major, the third of C major is E natural. And so we're gonna let E natural stay the third of the chord, but instead of it being the third of major, E is gonna be the third of C sharp minor. And that's the slide progression, right? So we've got that awesome common tone in the middle there. So all of these, you can see, they're chords that we feel like they should not be related to one another. But through the really simple slide transformation, they are. And again, just like all of these, 
They go between major and minor, minor, major. They work both ways. So if we look at A minor, right? Those are A, C, E. We can take the third of that minor triad, C natural, and use the slide and go between A minor and A flat major. Wow. That's just powerful stuff, right? The thing to point out with this one is that, again, just like we saw with some of the earlier options, there are these sort of enharmonic respellings that sometimes come up. That's mostly between parallel and slide where we see that. So here we could have E major with G sharp as the third and slide to F minor, right? Because G sharp and F, sorry, because G sharp and A flat are the same, right? We've got that common tone. So we got that beautiful slide um, and harmonic spellings all the time. Let's look at the voice leading that, that gets us there. This one's slightly different. Instead of just one voice moving, right? Remember, for P, L, and R, we had only one voice moving. But here, we've got two voices, but they each move by only one semitone. So go back to C major. C and G, the root and the fifth, both go up or both go by one semitone, right? So if we start minor, for instance, A, C, E, the root and the fifth, root A, fifth E, go downwards by a semitone. And we've got that common tone right in the middle, which makes the whole thing work. So those are our P, L, R, and S transformations. There's a lot in there, but again, I want you to really rely on the fact that you know so much already about the P transformation and the R transformation. Uh, the leading tone can be a little tough to, to find right away, but you are very familiar with those things too. Slide's a little funky, but sometimes the funkiest things are the ones that are easiest to remember. So those are our transformations, and we're gonna start making some cool music with those uh, fairly soon. <laughs>